Ever notice how some people just uh, make their work look effortless? Like they've got this uh, built-in GPS for their career, always making the right call, you know? Today's deep dive is all about cracking that code. Like, how do experts think? And how can we learn from them, even if they don't really know how to explain what they do? It's like they're working with a full deck of cards, right? Yeah. And we're kind of stuck with just a few. Yeah. And we're digging into this book all about thoughtful analysis, which I got to say sounds a little crazy technical at first, but it's really about mapping out the mental steps behind like, you know, expert performance. Think of it like this. We all see the what of someone's work, right? But thought flow is about uncovering the how and the why behind their thinking. It's that invisible, you know, that 70% of knowledge that experts just really struggle to articulate. Wow, that 70% is huge EE. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of trying to teach my friend how to bake bread once. I kept saying things like, you'll know it's ready when the dough sounds hollow. And she was just staring at me like I was speaking like a whole other language. Exactly. <laughs> and without that crucial 70%, those are the instinctual decisions that experts just kind of make it so much harder to like truly master a skill or a field. That makes sense. So how do we even begin to tap into that hidden knowledge? I mean, where do we even start? OK, so we've got this like hidden 70 percent of expert knowledge we got to uncover. Right. So how does thought flow analysis actually help us do that? Well, it kind of gives you a practical framework. You know, it breaks down this whole expert thinking into three key steps, discriminations, determinations and then decisions the three d's okay i'm really curious about these what makes them so powerful for understanding like how experts think mm. let's start with discriminations okay imagine a seasoned doctor examining a patient right mm. they're not just looking at symptoms in isolation no, they're picking up on these subtle cues like a slight change in skin tone maybe a hesitation in the patient's voice, things that someone without their experience might just totally miss. So it's almost like they've got this like internal radar that's always scanning for like those crucial details, even if they don't even realize it. Exactly. And it's not even just about noticing them. It's about knowing what those details actually mean in that context. And that's where determination comes in. That's that mental process of taking those discriminations and figuring out what's really going on. So in our doctor example, right, they're not just seeing like, oh, a rash. They're thinking, OK, this type of rash combined with their medical history and the fact that they mentioned like recent travel. Hmm. That points to a specific possibility. You got it. It's like putting together a puzzle, right? connecting all those dots to form this like much clearer picture. And that leads us to our final D here decision. Which is where the rubber meets the road, right? They've got all this information now. They've analyzed the situation. Now they got to choose a course of action. Precisely. And because of those previous steps, the discriminations and determinations that decision they make, yeah. it isn't just a shot in the dark. It's grounded in their deep understanding and experience. OK, I see how this applies to things like medicine and maybe even something like firefighting, where those split second decisions are just so crucial. But what about for someone like me? You know, I mostly work with words and ideas. How do those three D's play out in like a more everyday kind of setting? So we've been talking about doctors and firefighters and stuff, but you're right. Those three D's apply to so many fields, even something like just writing an email. You're making those discriminations about your audience and like their tone, hmm. determining what information to include and how to phrase it, and then making decisions about the overall structure and call to action. Exactly. Like think about a time you got an email that just clicked for you. It was clear, concise. It got you exactly what you needed right. Chances are, the person who sent that, they instinctively used the three Ds, even if they didn't realize it at the time. Wow, that's fascinating. It's like this hidden language of expertise that we all speak to some degree, but thought flow analysis helps us like decode it. Precisely. And by understanding that language, we can become more intentional about developing our own expertise right. Instead of just going through the motions, we can stop and ask ourselves, what discriminations am I making here? What determinations are guiding these choices I'm making? How can I make better decisions? So it's not just about what we do, but how we actually think about what we do. Exactly. That's where the real power of this thought flow stuff lies. You know, yeah. it gives us this framework for learning from our experiences, for turning those aha moments into repeatable skills. Which begs the question, how do we actually use this? I mean, let's say I'm trying to teach somebody a new skill at work. What's like, like, takeaway challenge here? OK, so next time you're training someone, really try to think about those three Ds. First, what discriminations are absolutely crucial for success in that specific role? What should they be paying attention to? So if I was training someone to handle customer service calls, like a key discrimination might be recognizing different types of caller emotions, right? <laughs> 
and how to respond accordingly. Exactly. Yeah. And now think about the determinations they need to make. How can you help them analyze those customer cues and then determine the best course of action? So maybe I could give them a few different scenarios to work through. Like, okay, say a customer is angry. What are some possible explanations for that? What questions could you ask to figure out, like, the root cause of what's going on? Yeah, you're getting it. And mm -hmm. finally, how can you guide their decisions to be more effective? Maybe provide them with a decision-making framework or even just some examples of successful resolutions you've had in the past. This has been, like, incredibly eye-opening. I feel like we often kind of just take expert knowledge for granted, but thought flow analysis gives us this powerful tool to unlock that knowledge and really share it with other people. Yeah, it's all about making the invisible visible, you know? Yeah. Like bringing those unconscious thought processes to light so we can all learn and grow from them. Exactly. So to our listeners, next time you encounter someone who seems like they've just got it all figured out, remember, they weren't born that way. They've developed that expertise through years of making those discriminations, those determinations, and all those decisions. And now, with a little thought flow analysis, you know you can too. 